In this video, I want to share about bobbins and bobbin cases. This is currently the most popular style of bobbin case, which is a drop-in rotary bobbin case. What that means is the bobbin case sets inside the machine and the hook spins on the outside of it. This is the tension spring for the bobbin case. This is adjusted by a small screw on the side, which is right here. If you're ever adjusting that, I would only spin it about a 64th of a turn at a time. Very little adjustments will make a big difference. These bobbin cases use plastic bobbins because the bottom of this case is held in by a magnet. And if you use a metal bobbin, it could run the risk of interfering with the feed of the bobbin. A few of the benefits to this style of case the fact that you can see how much thread is left on your bobbin when you look through the mostly clear covers that are included on modern machines. They also sew a wider stitch and often come with a greater variety of stitches compared to a comparable front loading case. If you ever run into issues with your bobbin thread feeding, it's important to check for burrs along the outside of the bobbin case. Sometimes these will rotate inside the machines and they'll develop holes, if not burrs, from where the needle has struck or punctured the case itself. Here's one example of that. Now although modern machines have plastic drop-in cases, older machines sometimes came with metal drop-in cases, like this older Singer Apollo case. Like its plastic counterpart, the tension is adjusted with a small screw on the outside. Now despite the fact these are made out of plastic, they can range anywhere from about $10 to well over $100. A nice thing about these older metal cases and mini front loading cases is that being metal, they can be buffed if we develop any type of burr with either emery cloth or as we do in the shop, use a Dremel tool with a polishing wheel. Front loading cases can really be split up into two categories. One being an oscillating case like this, where the hook goes up, oscillates backwards, essentially rocks back down to complete the stitch. And the other being a rotary case in which the hook constantly revolves around the case. The tension is adjusted on these cases again with a small screw on the side which increases or decreases the tension on the tension spring. With most front loading cases, they include some sort of wing that will hold the bobbin in place when you're loading it. Like drop-in cases, Rotary cases often allow you to sew a wider stitch. Many will allow you these days to go up to about 11 millimeters wide. Now most oscillating cases will only allow you to sew to approximately 5.5 millimeters wide. But with that, if you look at the stitches produced by these cases under a microscope, the oscillating case often performs better. Now although I just have four examples here, there are over 40 different styles of bobbin cases such as Bernina's new style, which is actually a jumbo front-loading plastic bobbin case. Now that brings us to bobbins. Oftentimes people will come into the store and ask for universal bobbins, which purely do not exist. Now with that, I would say that these are often sold as universal bobbins. Oftentimes they're referred to as class 15 bobbins, and they're offered in both metal and plastic. Both sides are flat. I'd say that they're parallel to each other compared to an older Class 66 Singer like this one here. Now these Class 66 bobbins are often sold as universal bobbins. If you go to a big box store and buy a package, odds are you're going to purchase these and they won't work with your machine. Compared to the Class 15, the Class 66 bobbins are a little thinner and they're curved on both sides. Now the diameter is very similar, so this bobbin will set inside of a front loading case, but because of the offset, it won't work correctly. We want to almost completely fill the case itself with the bobbin. 
It will, however, work perfectly when it's paired with the correct bobbin case, such as this Apollo case. This is the most common metal bobbin on the market. It's applicable for most front-loading oscillating machines other than machines such as Bernina, which use a manufacturer-specific bobbin. It's the same size as a class 15 plastic bobbin. These can be used interchangeably, but some people swear by plastic and some people swear by metal. I would use whatever you prefer. Plastic tends to run a little quieter, but I would match a metal bobbin with a metal bobbin case. This can get a little confusing because although these two bobbins are the same diameter, one is specific to Bernina's. So the Bernina bobbin has a smooth ring on the inside in which it rides inside the bobbin case. Now if we compare that to a Japanese style or a class 15 style bobbin, the class 15 has an indexing key for some bobbin winders and the inside ring is actually what I described to be smashed down. It's not smooth on both sides. So although they're very similar, if you have a Bernina, I would highly suggest using their bobbins. To share a few unique bobbins, this is a new generation Bernina bobbin. It has foils on the outside of it, so the machine always knows if the bobbin is inside the machine. It's also tapered on the inside, so you can't load these bobbins onto the bobbin winder incorrectly will only go on in one direction. Similarly, these Husqvarna bobbins will only load onto their winders in one direction. On the inside, they have these, I would describe to be arrow shapes. So they're indexed, so it will only load on the winder one way. Here's an example of a front-loading rotary bobbin compared to a standard Bernina bobbin. So these are just a few examples of different bobbins and bobbin cases. For our store, being a smaller store, we still stock about 40 different styles of bobbins and at least 30 different styles of bobbin cases. Now because there's so many different styles, I can't stress enough how important it is to match your bobbin to your machine. If at all possible, I would always recommend going to your local dealer who should have them in hand. And if not, if you're going to order it, just make sure the bobbin or bobbin case is specific to your machine. And along with that, I would always recommend winding your own bobbins than buying any type of pre-wound bobbin, which are often cardboard. I would also give the tip to have an extra bobbin case on hand if you can afford it. If you do any type of embroidery or embroidery stitches, you can take one of the bobbins specifically, mark it with modeling paint or nail polish, and roll that tension up slightly. We would do that because when we're doing embroidery, we want the top threads to pull down, where normally we want the two tensions or two threads balanced. Some manufacturers have actually caught on to this and will market embroidery specific bobbin cases. Oftentimes these just have higher tension but are no different than their standard versions. Some companies such as Bernina have done this for quite some time. They've marketed this case in two different styles. Their older models used to have a gold leaf where this one's silver and on their newer larger machines they offer the bobbin cases in different colors so the standards black but they'll offer them in yellow or red and there's no difference they're just a different color with slightly higher tension thank you so much for watching if you have any questions regarding your sewing machine bobbins or bobbin cases or sewing in general please leave them below and we'll do our best to get back to you